and welcome everyone to third edition of our Kona special with Germany's top pick, top pick for a top position in Kona, Mr. Florian Engert. How are you doing? Hey Lasse, um, yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm in Kona right now, so it's actually eight o'clock in the evening. I arrived yesterday and yeah, already had my first training day. Um, trying to get used to the climate and see a little bit of yeah of Kona because it's my first time on Hawaii. So. What, what what about the jet lag uh, jet lag situation? Is that the uh, Um Yeah, I'm getting there. Um, I think it was quite good that I was in Dallas before. So I had already like seven hours of um, time difference. Um, I was used to that, but now it's an additional five hours, so 12 hours in total compared to um, Germany. So yeah, I think I will need three or four days more, but um, I'm getting there, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, we're not going to be too personal here, but actually I, I couldn't help to mention that your girlfriend did pretty well in uh, in Almere, and you, uh, yeah. with your top performance in uh, in uh, the PTO Cup, so you actually uh, gained quite a lot of money to, to go to Hawaii, or did you uh, leave her, her behind in, in Germany? <laughs> um, I left her behind in Germany because she's okay. a teacher, and uh, <laughs> um, the school the school started for her um, actually two days after she won Challenge Almere. So, um, yeah, but she will join on Hawaii. Um, okay, later. later. Okay, so, so, so yeah. Uh, yeah, but but uh, of course, uh, I believe that you guys, uh, you, you booked way ahead, so you didn't have to, to sell the house or anything to go to Kona? <laughs> no, luckily not. <laughs> oh, okay. That's great. Let's talk a little bit about the um, the race in uh, in Dallas because you ended up fifth, but on the bike it was like okay, this this is the Florian Engert who uh, arrived on the stage like four or, or five years ago where he really drilled the bike and yeah. like even Magnus and the boys they couldn't catch you in the end and you had a lead and one minute. So uh, was that uh, to test things here before Kona? Yeah, I mean, it was um, the plan always was to have like the last kind of hit out um, session or let's say race um, before Hawaii, because I think um, in the last two years, you saw that um, also long distance racing just gets faster and faster. So it's not about like um, the distance, but it's about the speed. So actually, I think yeah. I made the plan with my coach that it might be good to race Dallas um, just to get some speed or to um, still train uh, the speed stuff, the speedy stuff in training and just to have one last hit out in Dallas. And I think yeah. that was quite good. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with the race. I would have loved to run a bit faster, but I think yeah. I kind of paid a bit for my effort on the bike. But um, actually, I... I wanted to try it, to be honest. Um, yeah. I think it was worth a try, and um, yeah. But, but uh, Florian, people talked a lot about the heat in Dallas, and of yeah. course, Kona is is well known to be one of the hottest places to race on Earth. How do you think you did uh, coping with the heat there? Do you think that you have made a a great um, adaptation plan with your coach? Did Did you feel that the heat got to you, or did you, you felt quite comfortable there? Uh, I would not say comfortable, but I was, um, I think yeah, we didn't really do heat training because I mean, in uh, Germany, the summer was super hot um, yeah. this year. So I was quite a, kind of adopted to heat already. And the two weeks um, prior to Dallas, it was also humid at home. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I was quite used to, yeah, to that kind of weather, but it was super hot, to be honest. I mean, it yeah. had 36 degrees, I think maybe 40% humidity. It was, and we, we, the race started at 3 p.m. It was yeah. insane. I think I never raced in hot, in those conditions. So um, just when we jumped on the bike, like the bottles on the bike and all the hydration was so hot, it was actually but yeah, boiling disgusting in the to drink yeah <laughs> close to that i mean uh and then after two laps on the bike when we started to get like the fresh yeah um, and cold water bottles from the aid station that was um mm -hmm. really the point where i started to feel now okay i can cool myself down a bit mm -hmm. um and i i mean i compared it to samarin because in samarin it was the same distance also 80k on the bike 
and I didn't use a single aid station. I just used the one or the three bottles I had on my bike. So I didn't use any aid station in Samarin. And in Dallas, I used one per lap, so seven yeah. laps, and I grabbed two bottles per lap. So actually, I always grabbed like seven liters of water, yeah. um, <laughs> just in in the race to, yeah, to drink it and to cool myself down. So actually, I always put one bottle um, on the bike or in my front hydration, and grabbed just one bottle to cool myself down. Um, and I think that worked quite well. And it was my only the only reason why I could perform on the bike as i did did you actually have time to to step on the on the scale to weigh how how much weight you lost during the race even though you drank all the time no no okay. unfortunately not that would have been really interesting to be honest but yeah um i'm not and sure i mean I, maybe I also a, a bit too geeky <laughs> after yeah. the hard race <laughs> a little bit a little bit yeah. just having a scale in transition <laughs> Uh, but uh, um, but 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 Florian, uh, yeah. I could see that. Uh, let's take Magnus. Let's take um, Sam Long. They just like they did like a hundred and twenty percent, like collapsing on the finish line. Yeah. Were you on purpose not willing to to push yourself that hard, or if you had been in a podium strike position, would you have would you have dug that deep, even though Kona is only three weeks away? Or I don't know. Have you thought about it? Yeah, I think that's. Uh... Actually, that's a big difference. I think that I didn't have, I didn't feel that good like the last two laps. Um, I yeah. had a little bit problems with my stomach from all the cooling, cold drinks, yeah. and all the the gels. Um, but I was, it was just a completely different situation. I mean, Sam and Magnus they um fought for second or third place in a yeah, yeah, in a sprint finish. So I think that you really have to dig deep there. Um, and yeah. I think Magnus started the um yeah his search for second place i think 500 meters before the finish line so he, he really had to dig deep and i mean he did an impressive run that was yeah. i was really impressed by that um but i was in fifth position so and I, there was no one coming from behind yeah. um at that point so yeah i didn't really have to dig that deep but actually yeah in i would have lost in any sprint finish if i would yeah. have done any so <laughs> um <laughs> yeah but did the the Dallas race is not the only top race you've done within the last few months because you were actually painfully close to become a world champion in the uh, it's uh, the the the, um, the World Triathlon Federation uh, formerly known as ITU and yeah. uh, if we're going to talk about it a little bit um, yeah. you had an uh, it was also of course on the same distance the uh, the yeah. 80 kilometers on the bike and. All credits due to the world champion, the guy from uh, French. But if you look at him, he he has an uh, an ITU uh, short distance background. Look at him yep. back in uh, March, going head to head against Martin Van Riel and Daniel Bega, losing yep. seven minutes on 90 kilometers on the bike. And yep. in Samarin, he he uh, he managed apparently to stay within one and a half minutes to you on 80 kilometers. It's yep. a little bit. It's a little bit strange because you, you're one of the strongest guys on the bike, and I I, I must admit here that um, on social media and so on, people were talking a little about, hey guys, where were the referees? So uh, yep. I know you are, you're a super nice guy. You are not one who who trash talk people after the race, and you uh, kept a straight face. But yep. but be honest with me here. It's of course it's a world championship. Um, yeah. It it must be tough for you to uh, to uh, to face and and to know. Well, things didn't really go uh, the way we're, they were supposed to. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's as you said, it's not about like down talking people or down talking performances or trash talk someone. Um, it's just in general. I think uh, yeah, it's not about only Samarin. I think it's just in general that you see like. Yeah. It's a it's a development that you it feels like you always have that discussion after races, no matter mm -hmm. if it's an Ironman seventy point three, an Ironman or a challenge or whatever. Just like after every race it seems like there's a discussion going on, like mm -hmm. where were the referees, was it a fair race or not? And that's honestly it's just so annoying and in a way disappointing. Mm -hmm. Um so and I think as you said, I, I might not be like one of the guys who's going out and 
um, pointing at people and saying, okay, he drafted or he did this and he did that. But um, I think in some cases you just have to find a way to announce it in a way which is uh, that just people start talking about it and people and yeah. also the organizers might realize, okay, there's something going wrong or in the wrong direction and we have to yeah. change that in a way. And I think PTO did um, did that in a really good way um, in Dallas. But coming back to Samarin, I mean, the, it was obvious that it was live on television that uh, yeah. Pierre Lecour did like, and it's, as I said, it's not about um, pointing at people or down talking his performance because no, of I course, knew because before, he, I mean, if people don't uh, punish him for it. Of course, who, if, if yeah. he's uh, not uh, punished for it, why not do it? Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's uh, for the referees. And I mean, if there was a referee, what Pierre told me um, and he didn't punish him, yeah, then uh, I cannot do anything. I didn't. I, and for me, if I ride in front, uh, I don't look behind like every 10 or 20 mm -hmm. seconds just to see if the guy is there or not, or if he's riding fair or not, because I cannot change it. Um, and it's not worth like thinking about that in the race. But um, And I knew, I mean, Pierre can run sub 30 minutes on, on a 10k so i knew that i would have needed like at least three minutes um after the bike um on him to win the race um i mean it was live on television that he apparently didn't ride in a fair way all the time and we had a discussion about it I did a post afterwards and he replied on that and tried to explain himself etc and yeah I'm, i mean i'm fine with him now it's uh, it's all yeah it's all set so um yeah. that's okay and i think um frit uh, funked also did the same and i think um yeah it helped to he um he apologized for it afterwards so i mean it doesn't change anything and as i said i'm i'm really really happy with the race in samarin yeah um, i had a like a couple of tough months before so i was really happy with the race in samarin yeah. and uh, yeah, I, I still believe it. It would have been better if it um, if he won in a fair way. Yeah, of uh, course. But you cannot change it afterwards, and I mean, it's just you just have to talk about it after races and find yeah. a way to address that in a in a good way, not like pointing at organizers and say, "Okay, that's that's not cool what you're doing here," and where are the referees? Yeah. But just like talking about it and find try to yeah. find a way to to change it. So, uh, Florian, people know you as one of the nicest guys out there and uh, no uh, trash talking of anybody, but don't you ever, maybe in your youth or or in earlier, uh, when, when you had your swim career, had any John McEnroe moments where you smashed uh, some uh, garden furniture or anything out of anger? Uh, how do you manage to stay cool in that situation? I know the first 10 people just in my local club anytime any professionals if they lost a world championship or lost even a local race here in denmark they will they will go bananas and you just <laughs> stand there and smile and say i'm i'm happy with my performance ha, that 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 must take a lot of mental strength to keep that cool yeah but i mean ps way of racing doesn't change my result i mean I had I hit a 90 minute all time record on the bike, so yeah. Um, and I mean, I did that no matter if Pierre was there or not. So yeah. Um, and I did a super strong bike ride, and I was able to have a run afterwards, which I was really happy about. Like yeah, the technique was there, and the speed was there, and it just felt good. And Samuel mm -hmm. is a special course, like super flat, and you can't yeah. really um, go out of aero position and just having a solid run after that yeah. Uh, yeah i was really happy about that and i mean yeah. no matter who raced fair or not that doesn't take anything away from my performance so um because that's the performance i did with my body and i trained for that so um i, lo I love it i love your approach i, I mean i love it i cannot i cannot really change any behavior of any athletes mm -hmm. um or if they respect the rules or not so mm -hmm. i mean why in the past, maybe I had some races where I really was angry about it, and but I think I lost a lot of 
um, energy in the race, um, thinking about okay, why are they riding the way that they do, and it's not fair, etc. But yeah. I mean, that doesn't that doesn't help in the race, yeah. to be honest. But, but 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 do you also feel that okay, people, the hardcore triathlon folks within the yep. community, they know data, they know this is not possible if you're not bound the rules. They can see this is a world class performance, yeah, sure. and uh, I, I, I'm happy about that. So. Take your yeah, medals, I mean, but I'm happy with this. I know that, and it might not always be. I might not win some races with my approach, maybe, but at least I can look in the mirror and say, "Okay, I do I do fair racing?" Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I mean, if you have a deep dive into all the data and all the results, and look at the races, who raced, mm -hmm. what races, and I mean, just when you look at some results of some races, you realize, okay. And I, I won't say any names, but some, if you see some names in the top three or in the top five or maybe top 10, depending on the race and the depth of the field, you know, yeah, that was not fair. <laughs> oh, yeah. I will, I will leave it like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's wise and I, I, I know what you're talking about. But, but you said that before the World Championship in Samarin, you had a couple of tough months but yeah. looking at your entire season compared to 2020 2021 i know we had the yeah. coronavirus but it's a very very um stable like you you yeah. don't you ha you have uh, it's all within top fives it's all top fives you don't have any uh, ninth yeah. or elevens and, and 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 we have to remember including this yeah. is two world championships one in uh uh, St. George and obviously the one in, in Samarin. So including yeah. two world championships, it's all top five. So so you and uh, Art Garfunkel or, uh, or Philip Five, as your coach is called, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, how, how, do you, how did you manage to, to get you uh, performing so uh, like, like, like uh, you know, there's no uh, swings in your results, if you can say so? Yeah. Yeah, we, we have the approach that um, we do maybe less racing, but the races we do, so we would rather do six races and try to do those six races good um, than going for 12 races and having only 50% of that like mm -hmm. as a good result in the end. I mean, to be honest, I'm not happy with the result I had in Challenge Valsi. I'm happy with Lanzarote and, of course, St. George. I'm really happy yeah. with uh, Samarin and... Yeah, um, I cannot say anything about Dallas because um, it was also a great race, um, and I'm really looking forward to Hawaii now. But just in yeah. general, in general, the the approach Philip and I have is we do less racing and try to have those races like perform in those races. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you look at my whole career, I always try to have um, decent fields. So I'm always looking for the actually I'm always looking for the tough races. Um, yeah doesn't matter if it was Daytona in 2020 in the corona year or I mean also my first Ironman um, there was Nick Kastelein and uh, Fred van Lierde I, mean, I raced Samarin in 2018 and 2019 and they were always like good guys uh, or strong guys also Tulsa in 2021 um, because I want to measure myself against the best in the world yeah. and don't want to go the easy way traveling around the world um, having maybe easy wins. I mean, I, I yeah. believe I could have won like maybe 10 races more if I would have traveled yeah. around the world. Um, but then, I mean, in the end, you're standing at a European Championships in Frankfurt or at the mm -hmm. World Championships in St. George and racing the best in the world. And mm -hmm. when you never raced them before, then you have no idea how they race, About you don't know about the dynamics of the strong mm -hmm. guys. So um, then all of a sudden you realize, ah, okay, I want maybe won twenty races, but I have no idea how good actually the world's like the best in the world are. So yes, I mean you that's also say my maybe... that's my approach, but um, it's maybe not always satisfying because I came away with a lot of fifth places, seventh places, and stuff like that, um, which I know for me personally were good results. But in the end, if you just look at it. Um, if you just look at the pure results on paper, it's a seventh place. And a lot of people don't care about that because you really have to dive uh, dive into the results and the race itself to see that a seventh place in Tulsa is 
a lot more like worth than maybe uh whatever a third place in Lanzarote. Yeah, exactly. But, that's that's but, for the geeks like me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, exactly. but, but 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 also maybe you can say when you are in a point in your career as you are right now where your of course if if you get a lot of third places you you also earn some money so you yeah. you you can you can finance yourself to be a bit more peak and say okay i have yeah, sure. yeah. four or five top races this year and i know that i can beat top 5 in all of those and uh, this way i don't have to yeah. race 25 times to earn yeah. that money yeah that's it that's it i mean in the end to, to be honest it's not about i don't do the racing to earn money um because i want to measure myself against the best in the world that of course yeah. Like the PTO has a big prize purse and there are mm -hmm. certain races with a lot of prize money. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I mean, that's fine to have, but I don't do it for the money, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but of course, I know that I'm in a lucky situation where I am, where I am capable of winning races or at least come in like the big races in the top five or top three, yeah. which is, yeah, like money-wise worth a lot. And um I profit from that in a way that I can go for training camps or also go on Hawaii, etc. So, uh, yeah, I know that I'm lucky when it comes to that. Yeah, but, exactly. I mean, in the end, it's also just like all the hard work. I mean, it's just the, uh, yeah, the hard, all, all the hard work I put in. Um, it's just the, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> What what do you think about the PTO racing, uh, the PTO tour meaning yeah. so much these days, and at the same time you have to be fit in Kona. Has that been harder to balance those two for you, or do you think that it's actually working well for for the way you uh, you approach racing and approach the, approach the sport in general? I mean, if if it was a good decision to race in Dallas. Before Hawaii, I will know in three weeks. Yeah, <laughs> but I believe it is. Um, I mean, um, also last year before uh, Mallorca, which was, yeah, like in the same on the same date as Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Um, I also did Samarin or a lot of just in training, a lot of um middle distance training, just to keep the speed, and we mixed that up with a little bit of Ironman training. Um, yeah. Because as I said in the beginning, also Ironman racing is getting faster and faster, so it's actually good to keep the speed um, high in in training. Um, and I know that I can, like, my body really responds in a good way to on like the faster intense or the higher intensities. Um, yeah, but I believe like the the PTO tour. It's actually the Dallas was my first race. I didn't race in Edmonton because I was supposed I wanted to. I wanted to race in Dresden, I remember yeah. 70.3, but that got cancelled four days before, yeah. um, unfortunately. But I really, I saw the coverage of um, Edmonton. And I was like, okay, I definitely want to race in Dallas because it's a cool race, yeah. I think. Um, yeah, I would have also gone for top three, top five, maybe in uh, Edmonton. Um, so, but just in general, I think from organization and everything, um, just from the depth of the field, it was... That was also really, really good. I think it was worth yeah. almost worth a world championship race. Um, so I really cool. loved that. I also love the style of racing. Um, it's just fast. It's yeah, a bit unpredictable. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just really cool. And the PTO put a lot of work in, and I think it's yeah. a cool thing. And and especially that it was that it is uh, streamed on Eurosport and just in live television. Um, in the big uh, big sports channels is also good for the sport of triathlon itself. Exactly. That yeah. Um, yeah, it gets more more attention from just people who are not into triathlon yet or not a lot into triathlon, and they uh, yeah, I think it's always good when it is in live TV. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm uh, all with you on on that one, and I think uh, it could be um, the future for the sport to to do it in in this format. Uh, Flowing about uh, the last weeks here into Hawaii. 
Do yeah. you guys uh, have a, a plan? I know, of course, you're staying close to your squad, but are you also do you have training plans with some of the uh, other guys, maybe some of the Danes, maybe some of the other Germans like Patrick uh, Lange and uh, and so on? Do you have any um, appointments about the crazy rides or, or, or how will your weeks look up to Hawaii if you can uh, paint a broad picture for us here who's not rich or lucky enough to be in Hawaii? Um, yeah, actually, um, as I raced Dallas on Sunday and the race was quite late, so it started at 3 p.m. I was across the finish line at 6.30 in the evening. Um, um, and Tuesday was travel day to go to Hawaii. So yesterday was travel day. Um, I will. I had an easy day today just to get the body moving again. We'll do that again tomorrow and then go back to training for uh, 9 to... Yeah, nine to ten days, mm-hmm. um, just like normal training, Ironman specific stuff with uh, runs at Ironman pace, uh, cycling mm-hmm. at Ironman pace, and swim and race pace. So that's yeah, just a general picture. Um, I will talk to my coach tomorrow after the swim what we do exactly. Like mm-hmm. I think it will be a longer run on Sunday maybe, but um, I don't know yet. And yeah, actually, um, with one of the Danes, I'm living here right now. He stays, uh, Daniel, um, is staying with me the first five days uh, before he moves into another house. Um, yeah, you can point uh, yeah, him on shoulder think... and say he he's up next if he if he hasn't got the invitation. But I'm just... yeah, <laughs> I will tell him. <laughs> I will tell him. No, we went for a swim bike run together today, and yeah, uh, yeah he stays here till twenty six. Um, September and yeah, I mean, I will see a lot of athletes in the aquatic center during the swim. Yeah. I think I will, I, we saw Magnus today um, on the highway out riding. So uh, yeah, I mean, you will see. I think the island or just the place where everything is exactly. um, is so small that you yeah, see everyone within the next two or three weeks, and then yeah, if if there's the time to go for a ride together, maybe an easy ride or also intervals and stuff like that, we can, yeah, I might make some appointments with uh, Daniel or Magnus exactly. or whoever, like, um, or maybe Sebi, because as we share the same coach, it might be quite easy to do that. Yeah, so, um, yeah we'll see. Of course, of, of course. I will. The, the aquatic center there, uh, of course, uh, for, for you guys to swim, but um, what, what about ocean swim? Do you do yep. you uh, do you mix it up? Because um, if you think about it, okay, you have this magnificent ocean and you can train on the course, but but maybe yep. I, I know for a fact that that most guys actually uh, keep it quite to a minimum to swim in the ocean contra and, and the aquatic center. Can you explain that a little bit? Why is it uh, important for you to to swim in a pool and not in the ocean where the race is? Um, yeah, it's actually. I think it's not uh, not a big difference to the way I do it with um, open water training and mm. just a normal swim training at home, because I I think you, or at least for me, I know that I have to um, get used to open water swimming just because you don't have a turn every twenty five or fifty meters. Mm. Um, so it's just something different, like swimming steady, like for two k without any turns or without any yeah. um, stops in between. Um, and just for the orientation, and I think especially here, I will definitely go for like more open water swims than I would do at home. Um, but um, just to get used to the water, to maybe the waves, we will go um, for a swim at around um, the time when the race starts, just to see how the light uh, light conditions are. And um of course i want to see some dolphins and turtles <laughs> yeah. while swimming uh hopefully no sharks but um yeah but just for the intensive uh for the intense sessions like with race pace efforts or just intervals i i'd rather do that in the pool to be honest because then yeah. it is more about times and getting in a certain zone and um i can do that by feel in open water but it's sometimes better to do that in just yeah. like the normal environment of like a here it's like 25 yards pool but um yeah for stuff like that for intervals it's better to do it in the indoor outdoor pool yeah outdoor pool <laughs> um and for 
easy swims, recovery swims, or just get used to the course, it's cool to do that open water. Yeah. The question we are all wondering, are you going to take out Daniel in the test swim one week before the race? Are you going to, uh, to beat him uh, on that one? <laughs> Actually, he told me during the bike today, uh, asked me if I was if I signed up for it, and I didn't do that yet, but he recommended it because he did that uh, three years ago when he raced yeah. here first time. He said it was a good way also just to get a feeling for the race start and just uh, swimming around buoys, etc. Yeah. Um, so I will definitely do that. Um, I don't know. I try, maybe. <laughs> you see, uh, it comes to a, one it, last question. We're going for Sorry. a sprint finish, the last twenty-five minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think actually Daniel, he was uh, second or third, uh, very close to the front the uh, last time. So uh, he's uh, he's up there as always. Um, one last thing: do do you guys use um, trainers? Uh, or, or do you uh, go out to train on the road? Because, of course, when you get closer and closer to the race, the roads are more busy. And, yep. of course, Tim Dunn and people have been mm -hmm. um, have terrible accidents in, in the past. So do you guys use trainers as well, or, or what do you do? I don't have a trainer with me, to be honest, but um, I know that Sebi has one and Laura, I think, also. So I have some, I have a trainer um, if I want to use it but i'd rather i have to see i mean the the highway was quite um busy today i mean also the down, uh, road down ali drive and um another road we took we took i don't know yet what the name was um it was quite busy um but i'd rather also for intervals i'd rather do that outside to be honest because it's yeah yeah i mean <laughs> When I go back home and start uh, training in November again, then it's all about indoor riding. So uh, yeah, yeah. So thank you. you save I'd it rather, for that time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but but your conclusion right now, you love the island so far, and when you uh, get the uh, the jet lag out of the system, I think you were going to uh, to uh, enjoy it so much. Uh, I won't uh, steal any more of your time, and you have to get back to sleep because tomorrow <laughs> at 5 a.m. it's uh, time to swim again, Florian. Stay yeah. safe and have a, a great race. And uh, please uh, say hello to uh, to Daniel and uh, the guys around you. I will. Thank you very much. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, thank you. And I hope you enjoy the race. Yeah, we we will. Uh, I will. Uh, I don't know if I have some uh, some spare money, but I will. Uh, I will uh, put a fair amount on you. So don't disappoint me. <laughs> <laughs> but no pressure, please. <laughs> It's great. Uh, take care. Yeah. Thank you. Same for you. Bye. Bye.